Hello, hello. All aboard. Choo choo. Welcome to Train Wake Wednesday, you guys. We're all aboard. And did everyone get their tickets for today? My name is Cassandra. I am with uh, Pecan Porch Boutique. And uh, welcome to Train Wreck Wednesday. Tonight, you guys, we are going to be working on this pair of, um, I don't know, I guess they're um, like side tables. I, I would think they're, they're side tables. So we're going to be working on these side tables tonight, y'all. And so we got a lot to do on these. So I'm not sure, I'm not, I'm not quite sure how far we will get, um, but um, we're going to start on them and see where we get to. So, um, so anyway, all aboard, all aboard. Welcome to Train Wreck Wednesday. So we're going to get started. Um, as you guys can see from the, um, the original picture, let me scoot back out of the way from the original, uh, picture that I, um, put up, I have transformed these already with some color. So, and I know y'all are probably like, Ooh, girl, you don't went way out now, but you know, y'all know this is train wreck wins and you know, we, we don't play it safe on this train. You know, we're going to roll on to our destination. We'll try to get this, these two twins to porch paradise today, or at least part of the way to porch paradise. Hi, Lori. Hi, Marilyn. So anyway, so I'm going to tell you guys the plan and you know, there's always a plan. Okay. And we're going to try to get there. So, um, I named, um, uh, my, um, and I forgot to put the link up there. I named this, um, this live, uh, romance, roses, resin, and regards. And the reason why I did that is, um, so my plan is, first of all, my plan is to use this beautiful decoupage paper you guys let's see if i can there we go this is um decoupage paper paper sorry i'm not even talking right tonight hi katrina um this is decoupage paper and i plan to use this tonight um this is um the floral um this is by roy cycle treasures and um the, this these papers are just gorgeous y'all aren't these beautiful there's a left and a right and so this is the um this is the let's see i said I, I wasn't gonna forget this is the left and then there's also a right put this down this is the right sheet right here and these are just gorgeous. So this is what I plan on using on these tables tonight on the top. So as you can see, these tables are pretty big. Um, these are some big tables and they are wood. Um, so that makes it a little bit easier. Um, each one of them has a little drawer at the bottom, if you guys can see here. So what I've already done is um, I've given, I've used two colors on these. So, um, and so, yeah, that's a little, you know, they're twins, but they got their own personality, y'all. So, you know, they don't want to be just alike. So, what I did was I used, on this table here, I used Kissing Booth. It's kind of a fuchsia type color. And I kind of picked the colors that I thought would really go good with the paper. And then over here, I used a Cake Batter, um, which is a kind of a really soft kind of a yellow. Not real bright, just kind of a soft yellow. Um, I know Katrina, this was a score. I'm going to tell you, I found these in the back of an old, um, in, in the back of a storage unit where I, I frequently buy from this particular, um, person. And, um, he, I was looking at something else and he picked up one of these tables and he sit it down and I went and he said, Oh, you like those? And I was like, yeah, he said, Oh, well I have two. I was like, seriously? So yeah, this was a great score. I love these tables. They are gorgeous. So, so yeah, so we're going to be doing, so, so anyway, this is Kissing Booth and this is Cake Batter. And what's going to tie these two together um, is going to be, um, this is um, Little Black Dress. 
So I'm going to tie these two. Hey, Donna. So I'm going to tie these two together with the paper and the, um, the, the black on the legs. So that's what we're going to do to tie these together. So, you know, they're twins, but, um, you know, they got their own personality. So they don't want to completely dress alike. So that's the first thing we're going to do. And then my plan is to, along this border here, on each of the tables, I'm going to um, keep in with the um, roses theme. And I'm going to take some roses, um, some molds from this heirloom roses mold. But we're going to do them in resin. So we usually use clay for these, but we're going to do these in resin. So if you guys have never seen uh, resin used on the molds, we're going to use, um, this is what we're going to be using. We're going to be using the amazing uh, casting resin. Can you guys see that? It's the 10 minute formula. So we're going to be using those to cast our molds with this time. And then y'all know, y'all know how much I love the kindest regards stamp. Y'all already know. Y'all know I love the stamp. So what I plan to do with this is I plan to do, um, you guys have seen me do the imprint method um, that I learned from uh, Jane um, Belk uh, from, I always say her, the name of her um, business wrong. It's uh, Funkature, Funkature Gifts and DIY Studio, I believe. Her name is Jane Belk. Um, so I'm going to be using the imprint method um, with this kind of regard stamp. And I plan on putting that along the inside edges here of each of the tables here and um, down on the bottom, these two areas here at the bottom of the tables. So that's what we're going to do with that. So that's why I call, and I, and I really want this whole romantic thing going on with these two tables, y'all. They just look like they, they're so, you know, um, um, you know, romantic. That's what, that's what, that's what comes, that's what comes to mind. So, so that's the plan for the tables. We're not going to get it all done tonight, but we're going to start. And don't forget tonight, y'all. Yep. It's the box. We have to pull. I got quite a few names too for the, um, the tall bench that we did last time. So we'll be doing that at the end of the live. So that's the plan for tonight, you guys. So we're going to start with the paper cutting that to fit um these are corner tables so um each table has these angles on it so um we kind of had i kind of had to do a little bit of um you know um placement playing to get the paper kind of where i wanted it because i wanted to make sure that i kept the the roses was, was that i wanted those to be the center uh, on each table below above and below so, so I'm going to stand up so you guys can see. I'm going to pull you in a little bit close so it skews the wobbling. So, I've already kind of placed the paper here on the top of this one. And I've taken my X-Acto knife and I kind of trimmed out this edge here. And so this is how this top paper is going to lay. And as you can see, I was able to get, um, in placing it like that, I was able to get the big rows kind of right in the center. And that was my goal. So that paper is going to go there. And then on the bottom here, let me see if I can get you guys down. So, there we go. So here on the bottom, this is my big ruler. This is what I use to, um, to score it with. On the bottom... I laid the paper like this so that I could get both this rose and that rose. So what I'm going to do for now is I am going to take my, excuse me, my little X-Acto knife. And I'm going to go ahead and cut these edges here. So I have it fitted down kind of where I want it. So I'm just going to go ahead and trim around these corners. so that I can kind of take off the pieces that I don't need. Okay, 
So there's that one. And I've already did the one at the back. So I'm gonna come over here on this side and I'm gonna do this one over here. I'm just gonna kind of lay the paper down and I'm gonna follow the edge. My whole goal, y'all, is not to ruin this paper. And then there's quite a bit left, so once I get it cut, I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to cut off that excess. Okay, so let me grab my scissors. Where are my scissors? My little craft scissors here. So I can cut off that little excess there. Okay, there we go. So now we got the corners cut out on the top one and on the bottom one. And so we can now start laying down the paper. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I am going to trim off some of this paper that's on the bottom here that's falling around these edges. And that's just so I don't have to, um, you know, deal too much with it while I'm uh, decoupaging it down. So I'm just gonna trim this off a little bit, just so I don't have that excess paper to um, to deal with. The less paper I have to deal with while I am decoupaging, the better. we're just going to trim off you know the edges I think you guys have seen me do that before so so I'm, I'm leaving it um, overlapping so that I can just trim off and get a good clean edge While we're down here on the bottom, I guess, hi, Sonia. Um, yeah, while we're down here on the bottom, I guess that's where we'll start with the decoupage. We're gonna go ahead and start there first while I have the camera angle down. Um, so I'm gonna use my, excuse me for walking in front of the camera. I am going to use my um, liquid patina to lay this paper down. And I just keep it in my FIFO bottle. And I love liquid patina, y'all. If y'all haven't tried it, it is great. Um, so I, I like it because it's kind of thick. See, and it's, it's kind of a, um, it's not real thick, but it's not real thin either. And so I really love it for decoupage because it's, it's just the right medium. You can also use it for a top coat um, as well. So, okay, let's see if we can get our decoupage on this bottom piece. I'm just going to start over here in this corner, folding my paper back. Can you guys see that pretty good? Fold my paper back. Start laying down my medium. And one of the 
things, y'all, um, when you're decoupaging, is you want to make sure that you lay down enough medium. Um, you know, I mean, you know, you don't want to glob it on, but you want to make sure you lay down enough. For your paper to adhere and I really I mean I've done both the um, iron-on and the this method where we're just putting down the top coat but honestly and I love both but I really like I really like the um, this method best and one of the things I wanted to also, you guys have probably seen other um, other um, creators do this, but tonight I thought I would try it too. So they are using a uh, plastic wrap to lay down their paper. And they say that it helps to smooth out the wrinkles. So I'm gonna take some of my plastic wrap. I'm just gonna tear it off, just like that. And I'm gonna use it to work my way through my decoupage. So I'm just gonna put it in a little ball like that and I'm gonna actually use it to kind of work out my wrinkles. So not really pressing hard, but just kind of working through and working out <clears throat> Excuse me, working out the wrinkles. And I can feel that that really does help. It's better than my fingers, I think. So, so yeah. Okay, so we got the edge laid down. Now we're just going to continue to work our way through. Pulling my paper back kind of to where I left off. I have to stand up. And kind of fold it a little bit so that I can get it. back far enough and so I had to put a little bit of more wrinkles in it because again this is a corner table and it's kind of you know it's really kind of um, it's got some weird angles to it so I'm kind of like all back here behind it that's okay. Can you guys see that? Yeah, you can see. You can't see me, but that's okay. You don't need to see me. Ooh, y'all, I've been a hot mess ever since daylight savings time, I tell you. I just cannot get it together. Okay. All right, let's see where we are. Lay it down, get my plastic wrap. Start to smooth it out. can see wrinkles, but I'm not going to worry about that right now. Got a little patina there. So I tell you guys what I have found. So I actually now, what I do now is I do a combination of both the, um, 
Katrina says, I use the plastic too. Yeah, that plastic is easy. I use the wrap paper too. Seems to smooth out a bit easier. Yeah, Donna, you're right. Um, so, but what I have found now, you guys, what I do is I, once I get my um, paper adhered, I, you know how you go back and you put your um, top coat on the top as well. Once that dries, what I've found myself doing now is I go back over it once it dries with the parchment paper and my iron to take out any leftover wrinkles. So I'm kind of doing both at one time. I'm laying it down by hand, but then I'm going back and I'm doing the iron down method just to take out any of those leftover wrinkles that might be there if I'm wanting a smooth look. So, so I kind of find myself doing both now. Okay, let's keep going. That corner was the hardest, I think. As you get toward the middle, it gets a little bit easier. And this uh, liquid patina is just, it's just scrumptious. So it goes on um, white but it actually dries clear. Of course, that really doesn't matter underneath here, but if you were putting it as a top coat, you may notice that, oh, it's going on, it's actually going on white, but it does dry clear. Okay. Lay that down. Oh yeah, definitely y'all. I've been missing something. The plastic wrap is definitely good for laying down and smoothing out those wrinkles. And I am getting a few wrinkles, but I like that. Um, cause this paper is called textured floral. So I'm getting a little bit more texture in the wrinkles. So I'm okay with that. But again, I, um, like I said, I found that, um, uh, once I get it down and then once I get the top coat on and let it dry, you can go back over it using your parchment paper and your iron and get out any of those leftover wrinkles. So you've kind of done both methods in one when you do that. Okay, we're moving on, y'all. We are moving on.
making sure to try to get your medium and not leave any bubbles, any air bubbles. Okay, it's coming y'all. I'm loving this. Don't you guys love this textured floral paper? It is just gorgeous, I think. So let's see. Uh, Donna says, where do you put the parchment paper? So what I would do, Donna, is once I get this laid down and um, I let it dry, and then um, once you put your, when you go back and you put your top coat over the top, because you would do that, you know, once you get your decoupage down, you go back and put your top coat over the top. Once that dries, you take your parchment paper and you put it over your paper. And then you iron, you can iron out the rest of the wrinkles. So the parchment paper goes over your paper. It's that protection between the iron and your paper. That's what the parchment paper is for. So I've started using kind of both techniques, you know? A little bit of uh, putting it down by hand and then a little bit of ironing it, ironing out the wrinkles on the back end. Okay, I'm going to scoot over this way, y'all. Sorry for being all up in the camera. And we're going to keep going. We're almost to the end. So again, I know these, these tables look really colorful, but y'all, I'm kind of going for a whole, it's springtime look. And I chose these colors because of the paper. Um, I wanted to coordinate with the paper. Uh, Katrina says, where do you buy the paper you use? Uh, Katrina, you can find these on my website at pecanporchboutique.com. These are uh, Roy Cycle um, decoupage papers. And this is one of the new ones. And I absolutely love it. I was waiting on something, y'all. I was like, oh, I really want something that I can use these papers on. And then these tables came along and I thought, Okay, you said you wanted something. Well, now you got it. So I just thought that these would be really pretty on this um, on these tables. Okay, what did I do with my parchment paper? Probably over there on the table. Let's lay that down. And I've already kind of cut out my corners. So let me get my parchment paper. So I'm getting these very subtle wrinkles in the paper, which I'm actually loving because it just goes with the texture of the paper. And it kind of almost makes the roses in the paper look like, um, you know, that they were a part of that design. But again, if you get some wrinkles, you can go back after you put your top coat on and let your top coat dry. Go back with a piece of parchment paper to put over your, over your paper here. 
and iron it down and you can iron out some of those wrinkles. All right. So the bottom one is down. Let's see, do I have any questions? Uh, Donna, Donna, next to the wax paper temple. Oh yeah, yeah, the parchment paper, Donna. You know I'm the dollar store diva. Girl, go to the dollar store and find you some parchment paper. Okay, so we got the parchment paper down. Now, I'm going to use my, <coughs> excuse me, you guys. I'm going to use my little piece of uh, sanding paper here, 220 grit. And I'm just going to go and I'm going to start to take off this edge. And y'all, when, um, when you're doing this, when you're using this to take off the edge, um, you want to uh, make sure you go this way. You don't want to go back toward your paper. Um, because it, again, it's kind of wet because you just laid it down for one thing and you don't want to risk tearing it. And the goal is to try to get a good clean edge. come around here on this side and I won't go in front of the camera this time I'll come from the back side and we'll keep going go what do you guys think so that's the front edge i just love this corner angle here so i'm going to go around on the back side and i'm going to do um, i'm going to go ahead and trim off these two ends over here all right and i won't go in front of the camera i will go around this way i'm going to go and i'm going to keep trimming off these edges course when you do this make sure that your sandpaper is good and fresh or you can use a sanding block as well if you have that side yeah I definitely need another piece of the uh, sandpaper this one's kind of dull I've used it on a couple things so otherwise I'd probably be at the edge by now but I'm almost there there we go all right I'm loving this y'all I'm loving where this is going so what do y'all think that's the first one. I just think that's really pretty. And I think it really goes good with um, um, the cake batter. I think that's really pretty with the cake batter. So, okay. So, now, you guys, this top piece, let me angle y'all up a little bit. This top piece here was definitely a bit, a bit more of a challenge because the paper 
these papers are 20 by 30. Um, they're 18 pound, but they're 20 by 30. And so to get the right angle or the angle where I wanted this, um, I wanted to keep this rose kind of in the center, um, I kind of had to adjust and turn and twist. And I finally got it to this angle, but there's about a little bit of just um, maybe an inch worth back here where the paper didn't go all the way back. And that's okay. I'm just going to take a little bit once I'm done and I'm just going to patch it in because that little bit back there isn't going to worry me. Okay, so there's the bottom. I think that's really pretty. I did have, have a couple pieces on the bottom, uh, little tears on the bottom, but I'm not going to worry about that either. But one of the things I want to say about this paper, again, it's called textured floral left and textured floral right. Um, so one of the things I want to say is that these two papers are actually meant, you guys, to go, um, I mean, not, I mean, you don't have to, but they actually join up to one another so that if you wanted to do it on like, just say a complete dresser front, which is one of the things that I want to use it for as well, um, you can match it up and it looks like one complete continuous, um, you know, floral arrangement. So that is, that is, that's one of the good things about this particular paper um, is that you can use it in pieces like I'm doing here, um, you know, separate, or you can use it to make one continuous flow, um, maybe like on a, on the front of a dresser or something like that. All right, so we got that laid down. Let's go on, and I really wanted to keep it out to this end here so that I would have just a little bit to trim off um, around this, this edge right here. So hopefully I've got this situated pretty well. So let's start with the top. And I think I'm gonna start um, on this end over here, over there, and fold back this way maybe. And we'll see how that goes. Working with these angles is really interesting because, you know, typically I've only done it on, you know, flat, straight surfaces. So this corner piece here was a bit of a challenge just to get the paper laid correctly. Um, but I think it's going to turn out pretty good. It may, hopefully it was worth it. All right. So I'm just kind of leaving the paper in place so that I don't have to situate it again. Um, but I'm going to go ahead now and I'm going to, um, lay it down and we're going to start over this way. What did I do with my... What did I do with my pla- oh, here it is, my plastic wrap. Keep my plastic wrap close. Okay. Just gonna lay it down like that. I'm gonna take my plastic wrap. Smooth it out. Yeah, y'all. I'm liking this whole plastic wrap thing. Much better than using my fingers. And it really helps to smooth out any wrinkles. Okay. Now we're gonna fold back that way and keep going. Uh, see that yeah and again just making sure that you get enough of your medium down without too much and I would definitely say that more is better than not enough because if you don't have enough in the middle 
I mean, you're not going to be able to go back to that middle part and get to it. So, all right. down here lay it down start rubbing it down making sure that I get it down in this back corner here I'm gonna need a need a little bit more of the liquid patina. I try not to put too much of my product um, in at um, one time, just so I don't, you know, in case I don't use it, you know, I won't have a lot of it wasted. So that's why I'm, I'm re refilling. I'd, I'd rather refill um, my cup rather than to put a whole bunch in and not need it. So, and I try to do little sections at a time. It just makes it easier to smooth it, um, to smooth it down. It's so funny because I'm I want to go straight, but this table is at an angle. You know, it's corner, so there's like no straight. So and you want to make sure to lift it up and get to the edge of where you let last left off. Because again, if you um If you don't get it in the center, then, you know, you're not going to be able to go back up under there and get it if you left a spot, so. Lay it down. Kind of smooth our way back. Smoothing out the wrinkles as we go. Do get a little bit of, of uh, you know prep time so you can lift it back up if you need to now one thing um, and I learned this from Royce is that if you really want your paper to um, if you really want the image on your paper to pop, um, to stand out, then you really want to put a lighter color um, paint underneath your paper. Um, and there are times when I when I do want that, but in this instant instance, I really wanted this paper to blend in with the table. So that's, that's why I chose some of the colors that were actually in the paper. All right, y'all, we're almost at the end. The end is in sight. It's got a blob there. Take that off. So. 
So you can always go back and get under the edge, but it's the it's the middle parts of your paper that you won't be able to get to. All right, let's go for that and then we'll go ahead and do the last of it. So for you guys that don't know, some of you guys know, um, but I also have a, um, a group page. It's called, it's on Facebook and it's called Porch Paint and Poly Pop. And um, I would love for you guys to go over there and post pictures of your artistic works or share ideas. Um, just a fun place to be. So I'd love to have more people go over there. And post your pics of your stuff. We'd love to see them. All right. We are almost at the end, y'all. This is the last little piece right here. Kind of a corner piece, too. It's not straight. Make sure I get up in that corner there. Make sure I get to the edge of where I left off the last time. And the edge along the back side here. All right. That is it. That is the last of it. Looks like I might have to go back and trim a little bit. As a, I've got, it's kind of running a little bit. Can you guys see that right there? Running a little bit. Um, um, let's see. Hi, Tabby. How are you? Let's see. Katrina says, can you add a link or say the name again? Yeah, sure. I'll add the, I'll add the link, um, Katrina. It is um, the link to my page. I mean, my, the name of my page is pecanporchboutique.com. But I will put the link, and I'm sorry, I, I usually put that at the top, but I forgot. Uh, but it is pecanporchboutique.com. Uh, the name of this paper is um, Textured Floral Left and Textured Floral Right. But yes, I will drop the link in there. So you'll have that. Just kind of smoothing out. And again, y'all, I don't even think I'm going to go back with the iron this time because I'm liking the way that the few wrinkles that I have in here are really blending in to add a little bit of texture to these roses. So. Oh, my Facebook group, Katrina, sorry. Uh, my Facebook group um, is called Porch Paint and Poly Pop. Do y'all know what Polly Poppy is? Or is it, am I the only one? 
I'm just dating myself. So when I was growing up as a kid, let me find my, I'm going to get another piece of um, 220 grit sandpaper because that one that I had is worn out. Anyway, when I was growing up as a kid, I don't know that we had any Kool-Aid. You know, the Hey Kool-Aid man, I don't remember him. But we had something similar, and it was called Poly Pop. So the name of my uh, Facebook group is Porch Paint and Poly Pop. So I would love for you guys to join and share your, um, share your ideas, ask questions, share your work. All right, so I got a new piece of sandpaper. Now let's see if I can get a cleaner edge without doing all that scratching. y'all don't throw away your scraps do not throw away your scraps keep your scraps because you can definitely use them for something else i have a whole like scrap bucket yes katrina porch paint and poly pop you got it girl okay let me see uh donna says i hate to get all the wrinkles out only for them to come back after you put the top coat on bummer <laughs> yes donna they do come back because you know it's paper and so um you are adding you know liquid to the paper so it's going to wrinkle um because it, it is um you know actually when you put the liquid on it's going to shrink and so but once it dries um, those wrinkles will go away and you, you really don't have to do the method that I told you I've just started doing that though um, If I have a piece that You know, I really want to be smooth But yeah, if you just walk away It's called the freak out factor and a lot of people do it, but if you just walk away um the wrinkles will, once the paper starts to dry, the wrinkles will go away. What you really don't want, you know, worse than wrinkles, is you don't want air bubbles. So you don't want air pockets up in here. Because the only way to be able to get back to an air bubble uh, would be to pop it maybe with a, a pin and then try to smooth it back down again. All right, y'all, look at that. What do you guys think? I think that came out really, really pretty. So now we have both our top and our bottom decoupage on. And I think that that paper goes really good with that color that I chose. So I think that looks really good. Um, so again, my plan is to um, remember the imprint um, method that I borrowed uh, from Jane. Um, I plan to do that here, and I plan to do it in these areas here with the kind disregard stamp. So, so yeah. So I think because again, we're going for romance this time. romance and then i also think that i am going to um so these this was the original um wood finish of the piece so i'm thinking that i'm probably gonna leave the wood here on this strip and then um as you guys can see down here um this strip and then this drawer i think i'm gonna leave them wood uh, we'll see kind of how that looks uh once once we get a little bit further ahead. But again, just to kind of recap, um, these are two twin, and I believe they are, you know, like corner tables. Um, kind of turned you guys just a little so you can see both. Sorry for the bouncing. Um, but I think these are like corner um, side tables. So, and they're pretty wide, um, as you guys can see. 
I mean, that's that they're pretty, pretty wide and they're pretty tall. Um, so, and they are really heavy. So, um, just to recap, what we've done is, um, before we came on, I painted this one in a uh, cake batter, DIY's cake batter, which is kind of a buttery yellow. I like cake batter. It's really pretty, kind of a buttery yellow. And um, I left some of the edges in the original. Um, I did the legs, um, each leg, in little black dress. And then over on this table over here, I did that in Kissing Booth. And Kissing Booth is kind of um, um, like a fuchsia kind of color. Um, and again, I, I did the legs the same color in little black dress. So, the, the goal is to, and I'm going to bring you guys back just a little so that I can sit down. Sorry for the bouncing around. So, my goal is to have these tables be different, but yet coordinate. So, I'm going to tie them together with the paper. So, um, having the paper the same on each side is going to tie them together, along with the legs being the same color on each side is going to tie them together. So, um, so that is pretty much all we're going to have time for tonight. Time flies when you're having fun. It's like, I don't even know what time it is because I swear y'all, ever since daylight saving time, every clock in this house has a different time. Um, but anyway, so again, we use the uh, textured floral left and textured floral right decoupage paper. Um, you guys can find anything that I've used tonight over on my website at pecanporchboutique.com. And the plan for next week, we'll continue to work on these for next week. We got this one done. I will go ahead and decoupage that one since you've seen me do it. And so next week, I think what we're going to do is we're going to work on our, working on our moles. Um, and we're going to use um, the heirloom roses mold because we're going to keep with the roses theme, you know. Um, we're going to keep with the, oh, hey, Shirley, how are you? Thank you. Yeah, I love these colors too. Um, we're going to keep with the roses theme. And I'm going to actually use resin though this time instead of the clay. We're going to actually use resin. And we're going to cast a couple of these molds. And my goal is to put these along the top edge here some roses these are roses in this one some roses and some leaves along here just to kind of tie in with the um with the the paper um and then um you guys know i love me some kind disregard stamp so we're going to take the kind disregard stamp and we're going to use the imprint method that we used the last time i'm going to take this stamp and my goal is to put it um, here, some of it here, around these edges here, and then down here on these portions here on each of the table. We're going to do a little bit of kind disregards. Um, you cannot go wrong with this stamp, y'all. This is a just a, a great background stamp. Um, and then, y'all know, I cannot let these go without adding a little bit of gold. So right up here, I tilt you guys up a little so gosh my camera my phone's about to come out so right up here on these little edges here i'm gonna add a little bit of gold gilding wax up here and i think that's all gonna come out to be really romantic don't y'all at least i hope that's where it goes okay so we're gonna draw um for the winner uh of the naming the uh bench from from last week um, and I got quite a few names y'all and y'all know how sophisticated we are on the porch we do it in the box so um so I got a bunch of names in here Katrina says yes go I know Katrina girl I cannot let these go without adding a little bit of gold just a little um, and these actually y'all saw the original picture um, these actually had the original handles and here are the handles, and I thought these handles were really pretty too. Um, so I'm probably going to do a little bit of gold on these as well. But I love getting the original handles. Okay, so before we go, I want to pull a name here. 
Thank you guys so much for suggesting, uh, for sending your suggestions. And let's see who the winner is. And and y'all, what I do is, um, if I pick your name, um, we name the the piece that you're that you sent the name in for. Um, I I send you guys, um, you know, something out of whatever we worked on, you know, what, whatever we used to work with that piece on, so that you can create your own um, project or your or add it to a project that you're creating. Oh, hey, Joni, how are you? Um, so, and it's called our Bud and Bloom bag. Um, I will send you a little gift. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and pull a name. Are y'all ready? Shake them up. I'm gonna reach in, swirl them around, because I don't know which one is which. And I got one. All right, let's see who the lucky winner is. The lucky winner is going to be All right. Marilyn Lindsay, you're the winner. Marilyn named it um Wildflower Delight. I know y'all can't see that. I know that's backwards and y'all probably can't even see that. But this is Marilyn Lindsay. She is the winner. Thank you, Marilyn. Congratulations. Be on the lookout for your Bud and Bloom bag so that you can create your own or add to a creation of your own that you're working on. Uh, Marilyn named the Tall Bench Wildflower Delight. That's a beautiful name, Marilyn. Thank you so much. Thank all you guys. I really appreciate it. Um, you know, I appreciate you guys watching, first of all, and I definitely appreciate you guys sending in your name suggestions. Um, so, I don't know if we've gotten far enough on these yet, but you guys be thinking of a name for the twins. Be thinking of a name for the twins. So, that's it, you guys. Um, hopefully, you guys enjoyed this. Um, I think they're turning out really well. Uh, of course, I have to go back and do a few little touch-ups here and there, but we'll do that in the end. Um, next time uh, we come back, we will work on, um, I will show you guys how to do um, some molds using the resin. Um, and then we will work on doing the, um, the uh, imprint of the Kindest Regards stamp. Um, and then we'll be well on our way, y'all, to Porch Paradise. I think we might get there this time. We actually might get to Porch Paradise without any, any uh, wrecks. So um, thank you guys so much for joining me. Um, I, as always, I appreciate you guys' support. I appreciate you guys being here. Um, and, um, you know, as we say on the porch and we never leave the porch without saying, don't forget for each of you to bud, bloom, and be unique. Thanks you guys. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining. See you next time.